and all the surrogates, amen, all the stepdads and all the, all the, all the people that stepped in, amen, when dad wasn't around or he went to change his shoes, amen, or take the trash out, amen, hallelujah, <laughs> I'll be back in a minute, amen, hallelujah, <laughs> his minute wasn't your minute, amen, hallelujah, but we thank God for all those who stepped in. Amen. Hallelujah. And and did the best they could. Hallelujah. Amen. I had one one child I had to just say, listen, I did the best I could. <laughs> I gave you everything I had, you know, and so that that's all I could do. Amen. That's all God requires of any of us. Amen. Is our best. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you being here with us in the name of Jesus. Uh, my uncle. Amen. Is scheduled to speak. Amen. Uh, maybe he thought it was 11 as well. Uh, so he might show up and I'll give it over to him. Amen. When he shows up. Until then, let's explore. Amen. Can we explore the word of God? Amen. So we talking about the father of all and his name is not Adam. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the one who made Adam. Amen. So we come from our fathers and our mothers. That class right now, but we come from our parents, amen. Hallelujah! And so, uh, those who say we come from monkeys and uh, a pool of ooze, amen. Hallelujah! Uh, I always ask the question, they don't like when I ask the question. I said, Did the guy wait on the girl or the girl waited on the guy? And they say, What are you talking about? Well, if it evolved, they both have to evolve at the same time to procreate the same species. So if, 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 if dinosaurs, bird, uh, birds came from dinosaurs, then that, pr that first bird that came from the dinosaur had to wait for the next bird to come from the other dinosaur so that they could have other birds. So how can you have more birds with a dinosaur? You can't have birds from a dinosaur. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's too deep. And so you have to have the same kind of species to have another same kind of species. So who waited? Was the, probably was the woman. She was probably waiting on this. Piece. Dude, come on, let's go. You know. And so who was waiting on who? So that's that's my that's my question. And they both had to evolve at the same time to have children. Amen. Of the same of the new species. The sixth chapter. Um, oh, you can get some. Some. The second question was. What's in flux right now? Something should be evolving with all the millions of species and ants and insects and birds, all the thousands upon thousands of species on this earth. Something should be changing right now. I, I, I heard a Christian apologist say that all of creation is in the book of the Bible volumes of what God did in creation. And, and, and uh, she said, the proof of evolution, I can fit in my Prius. It's it, it, it just so a bone here, a knuckle over here, and it had the same type of bone, so they, it had to evolve from that, that species. And so that was my second question. What, what's in flux right now? What's evolving right now that we can see that it's evolving? Now, I'm not going to go into Darwin and the, the, the origin of the species and all that. Uh, but we're talking about the Father today. Amen. Jesus came to bring order to earth. He took a shot. Amen. And to bring God's divine way to the earth. To let us know how to worship God. Every concept, every theory. Y'all ever try to make pancakes? What's the rule about the first pancake that you make? It makes all the rest better. No, you always mess up the first one. The first one usually usually looks like an accident. It kind of looks kind of, you know, all torn and tattered. And then you got the temperature right now. You got your spacing right. Or, or if you use a spoon or the, or the little gun that we use in restaurants, the little pancake machine. And so, uh, or a ladle, uh, or, you know. But the first one's usually a mess. And so, uh, and, but the rest of them looks a lot neater and, and the temperature and everything is right and what place you put on the grill or the pan and everything is perfect. Don't mind a grease or oil or whatever you use, non-stick or whatever. And so, 
uh, man messes up. God cleans up, straightens up. Amen. He give God, he gave man his divine order in Leviticus and Exodus. Um, and, and the children of Israel, as they came out of Egypt, and gave them instruction as to how to live for him. Amen. So that they could know um, the righteous way of God and live not like he, not walk like an Egyptian, uh, but to live like a believer in Christ, a believer in God. And to show all the other nations, you know, sometimes your parents, you got siblings, sometimes your parents will say, you need to act more like Jimmy. Look how Jimmy's doing. Yeah, well, Jimmy, Kim <laughs> said, boy, <laughs> he's not the example because you don't know what he did yesterday. <laughs> and so, and so, uh, and so God wanted Israel to be that example to everybody else of how to live right. And so he said, don't mess with any other nation. Take them, kick them out the land, and you take the property and own the property. Israel made deals. Hey, I'll let you stay. You give me this and give me that. And he, they bartered with them, and they started worshiping the, the gods of those other nations. So God said, I didn't tell you. What did I tell you? The parents said, what did I tell you to do? You know, and, and they didn't do what he told them to do. So he punished them. He put them on time out. And those other nations that of the gods that they was worshiping, he let those other nations come in and take over their country. And so they, if you want to worship that God, then you're going to serve those nations. And so uh, they, they were subjugated to those other nations. And they said, God, help us. we sorry. We are your children. Help us. Yes, you're my babies. I love you. And he had come in and rescue them. And they say, thank you, God, for rescuing us. And then they go back into idolatry and do some things outside the will of God. Amen? And so that continued until God said, okay, that's enough. God can't die. He can't bleed. He's a spirit. God is spirit. Spirit, and so and so, uh, he said, "Let me do this." And John one tells us, uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and and he wrapped himself in flesh and dwelt among us. And we know that to be Jesus Christ, who came and died for the sins of the world. So he not only he did that, but he wanted to correct divine order, amen, and not put it in the nonsense and craziness of man, but put it in the power of God, amen. So he was given a lesson here in the sixth chapter on how to do it man's way or do it God's way. Amen. And God, how many know that God's way is the best way? Amen. Amen. Doing what they told you to do is best. I was in, I was in a conversation with a parent and a child. They was having problems. A young man would, would act up on occasion. And I said, uh, uh, I said, can I talk to, I talk to him by himself? I said, how do you defeat your parent? How do you beat, how do you win against them? came up with some concepts that I would not like to share here in, in, in church, amen, on a Sunday morning in Father's Day. Amen, hallelujah. I said, no, the way to win with your parents is to do everything they say. That's the, that's the only way you want to win. They're your adults. They love you. Nobody on earth loves you more than your parents and those that are raising you. They care. And so you want that love. You want to receive that love, but you want to listen and obey. See this big cranium I have? I'm 57 years old. This is a 57-year-old brain. Do you know how much information is in here? A lot. Before you came here. And those that are older than me, theirs is even bigger. So, so there's a lot of information in here. You see how small your brain is? How small it is? This little, little baby. Let me put it little small brain. It can't hold but so much information. Wisdom is understanding that they know more. And so you listen to what they have to say so that, amen, your life can become better. I call it greater wisdom, learning from other people's mistakes. And they'll tell you about some mistakes they made. Sometimes your parents will do that. And they'll cry, not because so much of what you've done, but because it reminds them of what they did. And so it, and it's like a repeat. And they don't want you to go down the same road. So they, they'll correct you a little bit harder, maybe even than when they was corrected. And so they might have got away with it. And I'm telling you, getting away with it is much more problematic than being, getting caught. Amen. Because you think you can get by with stuff. <laughs> and then the big one hits. And then you're like, man, I wish I would have got caught back there the first time or the second time. But now you need, well, now you in it. <laughs> you know, you in it. And so 
Amen. So you're getting in greater trouble. So Jesus was telling the disciples and the people of God how to connect with God, how to pray and reach God. How, how many want their prayers answered? How many pray? How many pray? Anybody in here talk to God? Amen. Y'all didn't do your homework? Y'all ain't pray every morning and every night? Y'all remember the homework? When y'all wake up, thank God for the new day. All right. When you go to sleep, you thank God for the day that's passed. All right. I didn't mean to do that on camera. I didn't want to put that there for y'all. Y'all know we, we're new and we did. Amen. So, all right. So let's go to <laughs> Matthew chapter 9. Matthew himself was an apostle. One sent. He was an actual follower. Four, four gospels. Two of the gospel writers did not walk with Jesus. Two did. Amen. Two literally followed Jesus. Amen. And we bow back our ass on this too. Amen. Hallelujah. Because of Sunday morning, I'll tell you which two. Amen. Hallelujah. Mark and, and, and Luke did not walk with Christ. Amen. Mark is like PBS. He put the documentary together about Christ. Like he liked the history channel. He, the stories and everything was there. <clears throat> and so he put all the stories together uh, and, and, and made uh, the book of Luke and the book of Acts. Mark is different. He, he come up um, in Christianity. He come up with the first century church. His mother invited the Christians into his house. Uh, and so he grew up in church. He was a church boy. Amen. He was the first, one of the many, uh, a few church boys, literally from the first century. And so when he grew up, Peter told him the, the story. I know what you heard. Here's the, this, is how, this is how it really happened. And so he, uh, Peter disseminated. So the book of Mark is really the book of Peter. Uh, and he wrote it down, and that's where the book of Mark comes from. And Mark did it unemployed. Mark was fired. Paul fired Mark. Amen. He called him John Mark, and he fired him because he, he was green. I had a color green to me. Yeah, green. But he, he, he fired him because he wasn't ready yet. And so at the end, about the third missionary journey, he, he said, uh, send Mark. Bring, tell Mark to, John Mark to bring my cloak, for he's ready. He's ready to go into the ministry now. And so, uh, so those are the four writers. Matthew is, uh, is the, he wasn't the first one, uh, but uh, they put his first because he was a Jew writing to Jews and, and giving them instruction in Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. Chapter number six, verse number one, Jesus is telling his disciples how to reach God. He said, take heed. He said, take heed that ye do not your arms, your money, or offering, or giving before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your, of your father, which is in heaven. In other words, you did it to be seen. They saw you. You got your reward. You want everybody to see, I'm giving a thousand, I'm giving a thousand dollars. You know, you hold it high so everybody can see you. You know, and so to be seen of me, I'm better than you. Because I'm giving more than you. Hallelujah. But if you had a dollar and that's all you had and you gave it in faith, it's better than a thousand. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, don't take heed. Be careful that you don't give your money to show off, to be seen of everybody else. You won't get reward from Father because you didn't do it for God. You did it to be seen. Amen. Therefore, when thou give your arm, when thou arms, do us down arms or give you money. Do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily, truly, I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou give or dost arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand is doing. In other words, you're not telling everybody what you're about to do here. I'm about to do this flip. Hey, I'm about to do this. Uh, like nobody else can do it and trying to show off, amen, because you're going to get your reward. Uh, you got to do it right first, then you get your reward. Hey, man, that was good. And so that's your reward. But God got a greater work reward for us when we do it his way. That thine arms may be, see in, be in secret, and thou father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Everybody's going to see your blessing. 
Everybody going to see what God has given to you. Just hold that to the end. Okay. Everybody want, want, want um, some people would want to be seen of men. And, but God wants you to do it for him. Have, have, I know y'all have people y'all like and y'all, you know, you have, I don't want to call it girlfriend or boyfriend because I, I, I wholly despise that term until 25. So, uh, but if it's somebody you like and you smiling and they smiling back at you, you giggle. <laughs> and they, and they, they bring some cookies to the school. And, and walk me and bring the cookies or apple or whatever you eat. I mean, it might be uh, 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 lactose intolerant or something. I don't know. Uh, Gluten free or something. I don't know. But and, and they walk. They here. They bring the cookie. He said, "Oh, they bringing me. So, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, the cookie in them. Oh, that's so nice." And then they walk right by you and give it to somebody else. And you and you just toe up from the floor up. You just like you chewing on lemons. You just so upset you, because you thought they liked you, and so and so. But they gave it to somebody else. That's what God is saying. You're not doing it for me. You doing it for these people out here to be seen. You're not. It's not true. It's not honest. You don't love me because you love the applause. You love. What people say and they see you do stuff. Oh, that's so nice. They're so nice. No, no. <laughs> when you give it for God, when you do it honestly to him, then that's what he receives. And then he blesses you where everybody can see you being blessed. Then some folks say, why are you so blessed? Because I give. I do this. I do it as unto the Lord. I don't do it to be seen of y'all because y'all can't reward me. Your reward is limited. Donald Trump's, Malcolm Forbes. Hallelujah. Bill Gates, reward. If you don't know those guys, look it up. Amen. I know you know one of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your, but, but your reward, their reward is, is minor. It's nothing compared to what God does. He knows the beat of your heart. He knows the hairs of your head on top of your head. Amen. He knows everything about you. And he can bless you better than anybody else because he knows you better than anybody else. And so he said he will reward you openly. Amen. But don't do it in a selfish way or just to show off. Amen. Y'all got that? Amen. Hallelujah. Fifth verse. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites. A hypocrite is somebody that say one thing and do another. Your words don't meet up to it. You can say you're a newer surgeon. Amen. At some point, you're going to get into that, that operating room, and they're going to give you that scalpel uh, and tell you, okay, now open it up. You said you're a neurosurgeon. Well, they don't do that because you don't even get in there. Amen. They won't let you in the room. Amen. You got to build your own room. Amen. And that's the thing about YouTube. Amen. <laughs> if you're not a, you, you don't have to be a surgeon or a doctor, but you can build a room somewhere, make it look like an operating room, put on the mask and the, and the, and the gear and everything, and look just like a doctor. And have a whole video, and everybody will follow you and believe that you're a doctor. You know, and so that's, that's some of the nonsense that's on there. And, but, but you can pretend with everybody, and you can fool people, but you can't fool God anytime. Because he knows, that's why he's the righteous judge. Because he knows your intent. Your parent, why did you do that? And you can tell them anything. They don't know. Unless they talk to the parents, so they talk to the school, and they already... I really believe they should put cameras in school. I really do, in every classroom, so that when, when somebody acts up, they can just, they're already online, some sort of way they can call you on your phone and put camera three on. No explanation needed. And that dude doing black backflips, there you go, doing backflips, amen, <laughs> in the classroom. And when he get home, what happened at school today? Nothing. You know that word. You've used it, haven't you? Amen. What happened in school today? Nothing. Your teacher told me that this and this and this. Oh, no, no. What happened was, and, and, and here comes Shakespeare. Amen. <laughs> and here, here comes Steven Spielberg. Amen. And his next production. Amen. Hallelujah. Disney have nothing on this. Hallelujah. <laughs> about the story about to come out. Hallelujah. And all the whole time you hearing them talking, you know everything. They, you know, you know what happened. You just want to see if they tell the truth. And, and the truth is you're out. 
You know I've gotten out of more tickets telling the truth but than making up a story. I was in Alexandria. I stopped at the, uh, no, I didn't stop. I pulled up to the stop sign, looked to my left and right. The intersection was clear, and I rolled through. And the guy, he pulled me, woo, pulled me over, and, and he said, uh, did you see that stop sign? I said, yes, I did. I didn't see you. I told him. I said, I didn't see you. Had I saw you, I would have stopped. And he laughed. He laughed. He said, okay, just be careful, man. And he went back to his car. <laughs> you know, but if you, if you lie, and, and there was another, no, I didn't tell you that. But there, there was some issues. If you tell the truth, everything's going to be all right. I was in a bad situation, and, the, and everything was bad. The vehicle, everything. My situation, everything was bad. And so I just got up out of the car, and I walked back to, now, now they, I've been dead as soon as I opened the door. But <laughs> this was a while back. I got up and walked toward, I said, is there is something wrong? Yeah, your bumper's hanging down. I said, oh, okay, this is not my car. I'm driving it for a guy, a friend of mine. You know? And so he said, oh, okay. And then he went back to his car. And I... I gave God praise. Y'all just don't know how, how much praise I gave my Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so as you read down here, he was telling them how to pray. Don't pray to be showing off. Don't pray to be heard of men. Amen. Pray to have the prayer answered. Right? Every child in here searches their brain. The, the figure out a way to ask their parents how can you know can we go to the store, or or popsicles in the freezer you know they're in there and the cookies on top of the refrigerator, whatever it may be and you're searching your brain as to which would be the proper approach. And you wait till they're happy. Are they fussing or just mad about something? They throwing pillows. You don't bother them because you know they're already angry. So you want to give them a reason to say no. So you're waiting for the right moment. One of your siblings acting up, you know, and they sitting there, they upset over that child. And you go, oh, it's going to be all right. It's all right. They didn't mean to do it. Can I have some cookies? You know, and so you try to figure out a way <laughs> to, to, to work them. That's the old street term called working people. You work them and, and, and to figure out a way to get what you need. But God is saying here in the sixth chapter of Matthew, the best way to get what you need from him, because he already knows before you ask. He already knows what you want. That's why they bought the cookies. That's what I used to say to my mother. You know, she would say, who ate the whatever? And I said, that's why you put it in there. Yeah, I didn't say it like that because I'm still here. You know, but, you know, that's why they're there to eat, you know. And so, and so they, it's there for you. God is spirit. Can I ask you all a question? Do God need to breathe? Do God need to eat food? Do God need to drink water? So he provided all that for us. He provide, And everything that's here is for us. It's already here for us. He just wants us to ask him in the right way. You understand? Like you going to, to uh, Brother Tez and say, man, give me those, those, those cookies now. You got five seconds and three of them already gone. I need those cookies right now. <laughs> you know what that means? Amen. <laughs> He's learned well. But anyway, uh, <laughs> you have to stop. You have to establish order. We are the adults. The kids have to learn from the adults. You have to. And so, and then as you grow, then you in turn share. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So in order to hear from God, how many want to hear from God? How many want that prayers answered from God? Then you have to approach him in the right way. Don't do as people in the street do. Don't do as these religious folk do. Long, deep prayers and to show off in front of the people, to show that they had an education. They, they went to the seminary. So they use all the 25 cent words. And, and, and I mean, it's big, long words and deep words. Nobody knows, but three people in the whole church know those words. And all of them went to Bible class in school. You know, and so, but you said it so they, so you can look educated, but you're looking stupid. Because if they can't 
reach God. And if it doesn't reach God, it's nothing. And it's good for nothing. Amen? Amen? Amen. So when we pray, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Hallelujah. So you respect him. You recognize him, Daddy, Mommy. You recognize who they are, first of all. Don't say you love them, even if you do. But that's not the reason you're there. So, <laughs> you know, so just say what you, need, what you need to say. That's it. And they'll say what they need to say. No, or did you, did you finish this, or did you do this, and you're not doing this. You can't get reward without responsibility. And you have to, get res- you have to be responsible first to, to, to obtain reward. You don't like it. I didn't like it. Try Seraphia. Please, please try that. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, a, that's another hour, right? I need a couch. I have some therapy over here in a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I learned, and, and, and I learned, especially when my parents wasn't getting along, I would, play, I would play them against each other. And so sometimes when your parents not getting along, you'll try to play them one against the other. My dad said I couldn't go. My dad he let us summertime, as long as the, the street lights was, we had to come in when the street lights uh, came on. We had to come in the house. My mother, uh, sundown, we had to come in. But winter, we was just foul in the winter. Winter time, we mad, you know. And so I go to my mother, and I say, my father told us we couldn't go outside and play. Now, I ain't going to let him hear that because it would be a different situation if he heard me say that, you know. And she, he said, go on out there and play, boy. Outside and play, but because I, I know they didn't talk when they met each other, so I played one against the other, and I would win until they talked. <laughs> <coughs> there was weeping and gnashing of teeth, I tell you. And so I learned just to be honest and straightforward with them, and be honest and straightforward with God, and He'll give you, He'll supply all your need. Everything you need is here and it's there for you. Amen. Give God praise in the name of Jesus. That means like this. There you go. Amen. <coughs> We're grateful to the Lord for Elder Charles Fields being with us today. Yes, yeah, we have the same last name. That's my uncle. That's my daddy's brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we thank God for him being with us. Amen. He has my grandfather, his daddy, Charles. Amen. Charlie Sylvester. Charlie Fields. Alfred. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My other uncle, Alfred. So, his name has the same name as my grandfather, Sylvester. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and so it's Father's Day. We're going back to the fathers. Amen. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And they had those boys, Joe and Amen, Charles and Marshall. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And and them boys had some children. Amen. Robin in North Carolina. And Amen. He Mark. Amen. Speaking of Mark. Amen. <laughs> His son Mark. And Amen. He had this young man named Renzel. Amen. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. What a day. August 21st. Lord, have mercy. Lord, what a day. But anyway, amen. Stand to your feet as we receive none other than Elder Charles Fields, Community Church of Christ, Triangle, Virginia, as he come in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God praise for the man of God. may be seated. Amen. God bless you. I could have just sit there and listen to El Lorenzo El right on through. All what he was saying sound good, didn't it? Amen. All right. God's word is good. <laughs> yes, sir. May bow your heads with me a moment of prayer. We much for God, our Heavenly Father, in the door, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are grateful and thankful for your loving kindness, your tender mercy. Lord God, we ask you to let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in our sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you. Certainly we give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Savior of the world. And thank God for you and you and you that has came out today. Certainly we, if you've got your Bibles, we want you to turn with us to the book of St. John, and the book of St. John. 
This is Father's Day. We're going to talk some about that. Amen. But St. John brought some beautiful words out. It's St. John, amen, the third chapter in the 16th verse. Very familiar song of, of scripture. Amen. And it's one of the key scriptures of the whole Bible. Amen. And that John brings out the word of God in such a matter. Amen. That it proves us when we learn to understand it and let it be done in our lives. Amen. It's the thing that should have always be done. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to, before I go to that 16th verse, we look at the first verse, third chapter of St. John, the first verse. I want to talk about that a little bit, then I want to go to that 16th verse, which is the main verse I want to talk about. Okay? Yeah, so there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know not thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that word that with him. Praise me. God had promised us in St. John 3.16 that he will never leave us, neither forsake us, but he'll be with us always, even to the end of age. Praise the Lord. Now, can I repeat that? Amen. Amen. Let's go to St. John 3.16 and let me repeat it. Let you look at it. 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, okay, believeth, continue to believe, in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Praise the Lord. God's spirit does not perish. Praise the Lord. Amen. God lives, and because he lives, we live. Praise the Lord. And that is because when he first made man, praise the Lord, in the book of Genesis, we're not going to ever just talk about it a little bit. Amen. He uh, blew in, after he made clay, amen, from the earth, he shaped and formed mankind, praise the Lord. The Bible said God blew into his nostrils, and man became a living soul. Praise the Lord. God is a living spirit, praise the Lord. And when he put his spirit in that clay, it became a living soul, praise the Lord. Amen. That soul cannot die because God cannot die, praise the Lord. Now, we, if we obey God, then we are given eternal life, praise the Lord. In other words, God will let that soul live. Praise the Lord. Amen. He has that power. Praise the Lord. And I want you to remember that he said, God is spirit, and he that believeth and is baptized, amen, holds the spirit of God. Amen. So it is among just believing. Now, if he made mankind from clay, blew into his nostrils, he became a living soul, praise the Lord. God can't die. Now, that Holy Spirit cannot die either. Amen. So he had to, it may prepare a place for it called the lake. Praise the Lord. If we don't obey him and do what he says, amen, then he's going to put us in the lake. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, he used the term lake because we know a lake of fire Praise the Lord. You are burned. Praise the Lord. Amen. But even as we, as having his spirit in us, amen, we are burned but not consumed because God can't be consumed. Praise the Lord. Saints realize that. 
Amen. There was no creature, no other creature on this earth that God put his spirit in. Amen. He formed all animals and, and beasts and praise the fowls, birds of the air. Praise the Lord. And he did all of that, amen, before he made mankind. Praise the Lord. But he never blew into the nostrils, amen, and put as them a living soul, praise the Lord. But he did it to mankind. The Bible says he made him after his own likeness, praise the Lord. And that like unto God, God is spirit, the Bible says. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, praise the Lord. What is truth? Everything God said is true. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is not a liar. We, we tell some lies sometimes. You know them little untruths. Amen. We said something that's because we want somebody to believe a certain way. Amen. But God don't play that. Amen. Whatever he said come to pass. When he spoke and called the birds. Amen. All the animals of the earth. Amen. When he spoke it, asked them, they appeared. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's the creator. That's why he's called creator. Praise the Lord. And he created us. Amen. From the clay, just like I said. In the book of Genesis, in the first of the book there, he expresses how God, amen, made man. Made him that clay there. And, amen. Blew into his nostrils. And he became a living soul. Now that makes us like God. Praise the Lord. Amen. That makes us, according to your Bible, amen, he will live eternally, and we also will live eternally. It's a gift of God. Amen. Come through the breath of life when he breathed in that nostril of that clay, and it became a living soul. Amen. So we worship today, amen, God, amen, son, that he sinned when man had sinned, amen, disobeyed him in the garden, praise the Lord, and sin come upon him, amen, then he was put out the garden, praise the Lord. But God thought that he cannot destroy himself, amen. See, when he blew to the nostril, that was the spirit of God. God cannot destroy himself, amen. So he made preparation, praise the Lord, amen. Pregnant the Virgin Mary. Praise the Lord that she can beget a son. Amen. He will come out on this earth as a man, amen, in flesh, praise the Lord, but God himself. Here when the old theologian said one time, amen, Jesus Christ was 100% God and he was 100% man. Praise the Lord. Only God can do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Though he was in the flesh, but he was God, amen. If you read concerning him, amen, as his breath as a child, amen, run around with maybe many awkward things and, amen, look things that no one could ever do, he did it, amen. Just throw, out, throw his hand out there and the birds start flying. Praise the Lord. The power of God was in him 100%. Now, he did that after man had sinned against him, praise the Lord, that he may move the curse. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I have you to know that they are according to this Bible. Let me read to St. John again. And let you show that 316. For God what did what? So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Praise the Lord. That whosoever. Talking about human beings now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Animals and all kinds of fowls and whatnot. They don't have eternal life. Praise the Lord. Only human beings. Amen. Believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Hereforth they live. For God sent not his son into the world to what? Condemn the world, but that the world, why? Through him. Watch that. Through him might be saved. Amen. Might be, amen, delivered from damnation. He that believeth, praise it on him, 
is not condemned. Praise the Lord. See, because that's simple your belief in your creator, it may free you from all sin. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're, we're sinners. Praise the Lord. Not because we did something. Saints, listen up me now. Amen. Because our first forefather, Adam, amen, sinned before God. And the Bible said that everyone that's born after the similitude of Adam was born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and come short of the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, we are sinners today, not because of what we did, but our forefather Adam, what he did. And sin passed upon every generation. That's why we are hopeless bad. Praise the Lord. We might go around and do some good things. Praise the Lord. Amen. But in our nature, it is a sin nature. Praise the Lord. That's why the Lord said, he know our thoughts afar off, and he acquainted with all our ways. Praise the Lord. See, ain't nothing that come in your, see, when they watch that, that thoughts afar off, ain't nothing that come to your mind and register where he didn't read it before it got there. Praise the Lord. That's the power of God. Praise the Lord. That's why he said, hey, amen, you know your thoughts are far off. So you ain't got to say nothing bad, but that nature in you calls you to do bad, hopeless bad. Praise the Lord. We're helpless bad. Hey, amen. We didn't have nothing to do with it. It was put in tools by our early forefather when he disobeyed God. That's why today all disobedience is sin. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's one thing about the word of God. We have to obey it. When we obey it, it cleanses us. Amen. As the Bible said, cleanses us. We're talking about the blood of Jesus. Is that right? Amen. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Praise the Lord. And that makes us free from sin. Even while we're yet now a sinner, praise the Lord. Amen. If we believe, praise the Lord. The Bible says, he that believe and is baptized, praise the Lord, the same shall be saved. Praise the Lord. The moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work at Calvary, praise the Lord, amen, you're free. Praise the Lord. God frees you. Praise the Lord. Because you have believed on the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. So then he lives in us. And praise the Lord. And every after matter of this being born of the Lord, praise the Lord, he works in our life. Praise the Lord. So now everything you do good as unto your neighbor. Praise the Lord. The Lord said, love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Praise the Lord. When you love your neighbor as yourself and do him good, amen, that was not you doing good. That was the God in you doing good. Praise the Lord. He had declared that he will never leave you, neither forsake you, but he'll be with you always, even to the end of the ages. God can't lie, and God can't change. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible teaches that whom the Lord set free is free indeed. Praise the Lord. No strange attached. Why? Because that's what Jesus died for. Praise the Lord. Well, well, he said, the Lord Jesus said, nobody can take my life. Praise the Lord. He said, but I, I lay it down. And after three days, I'll pick it up again. Praise the Lord. That, that, that's God talking because he can't die. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he can lay his life down. Amen. And, for he, and he laid it down, amen, for all mankind. Praise the Lord. Now, before he laid it down, praise the Lord, my, they offer up turtle doves, pigeons, praise the Lord. In different kinds of animals as a sacrifice. Praise the Lord. You find that in your Old Testament that amen, uh, sins might be forgiven but for one year. And after every year you had to go back, praise the Lord, and make those same sacrifices again. Praise the Lord. But look what happened. When God himself came down and pregnant Mary and came a babe in Bethlehem, Praise the Lord. And when he laid his life down at Calvary, amen, our sins is forgiven now forever. 
you have no sin. Even though we make mistakes, we say something wrong, we do something wrong. Praise the Lord. When you say, Lord, forgive me, he already forgave you. Praise the Lord. There's nothing that you can do that God can't forgive you. Oh, yes, it is. Let me bring that out real plain and clear. God can't forgive you for self-murder, okay, and blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. If you said the Holy Ghost is not so, <laughs> the Holy Ghost is so. So he can't forgive you for that. You deny him. He is Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And when you deny your Savior, your Creator, then ain't no more help for you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So now if you deny the Holy Spirit, then there's no help for you. Praise the Lord. Uh, if you self-murder, thou shalt thou shall not kill. Okay? And when you break that law and kill yourself, praise the Lord, now he can't forgive that. But ain't nothing else on earth that you can do or say wherein your sin, saints, all you listen to me, is forgiven already. Hallelujah. All you got to do is believe and go forth to carry out whatever duty that you can. You don't have power like Satan have over you. Just as long as you're in the flesh, he has power over you. He can have you to say things and do things that you ask yourself the question. Now, why did I say that? Why did I do all that? I didn't mean all that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we are hopeless bad. But Christ, saints, we remember now, Christ had laid down his life and uh, freed us from that. Amen. So we don't have to worry about that no more. Amen. But he now... If we want to serve him, praise the Lord, and he said now, uh, uh, serve one another. Huh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Say, now, if we want to really be a servant, serve your sisters and brothers. That's our particular and only job throughout our life. We are the, supposed to make one another happy in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do for one another all that is in our power to do. We got a weakness, praise all, of having choice sometimes. Somebody I treat nice, somebody I treat wrong. Praise all, somebody I respect, somebody I disrespect. But every human being belongs to God. Praise Lord. Some of them ain't right. Some have lied and cheated and praise the Lord and did work, killed and, and right on. But God forget that if he murder somebody, he'll forgive you for that. Amen. Because he knows that you're hopeless bad. Amen. You can't help yourself when you did that. Because of the sin nature you have, and you have no, no power over Satan. Hallelujah. He has power over you. Praise the Lord. We are subject. The Bible says we are subject to the devil. Praise the Lord. That means we'll do devilish things. Now, it ain't that you did it physically. And look, <laughs> this thing operates in your mind. Praise the Lord. You may not touch nobody physically, but in your mind, <laughs> you just tear them all to pieces. Amen. That's also sin. For God, see that. Amen. But he'll forgive you for that. Praise the Lord. And like I said, now, if you murder somebody, God will forgive you for that. But if you, just like I just said a moment ago, if you murder yourself, now he can't forgive you that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Saints of God, it's high time that we as people of God, amen, show love one to another. Amen. The Lord said in the scripture, he said, now, how can you still say you love me? Amen. You ain't never seen me. <laughs> You know, we, we, we have a tendency to love what we see. Amen. Touch and feel. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then he said, uh, if we say, you say you love me and hate your brother, he said you lie and the truth ain't in you. Praise the Lord. Amen. To love God is to love your sister and brother. He said, how can you say you love me, which you have never seen, and hate your sisters and brothers that you see every day? 
He said, you're a lie and the truth are in you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So to love God is to love your fellow man. God ain't killed them. God ain't hurt them. Now don't you try it. <laughs> now he made them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you show love and affection to all human beings. Amen. Now that's not the cattles and the birds and the no, no, we're talking about human now. Amen. God made them, as your scripture said, in his own likeness. Praise the Lord. Now, what are you talking about own likeness? They live forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, Paul said in the scripture concerning himself, he was getting to be a quite old man, and certain things would happen to his body. Amen. It was breaking all up. The 12th chapter of Roma. Amen. He said in the 12th chapter of Roma, I beseech you, dear brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And he said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Lord, just change your mind. You said something wrong or thought something wrong, change it. <laughs> Do something right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, praise the Lord. Then that's what we have to live through. Paul seen it in his life. Praise the Lord. And he tried to explain to us, yeah. amen, you have the same kind of disease, if you will. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So present your body as living sacrifice. In other words, do everything you can for your sisters and brothers in the Lord. That's all mankind. Yeah. Praise the Lord. They don't want to have souls. Amen. According to the Bible, animals don't have souls. Praise the Lord. Amen. You have probably seen pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ that do something like that and a bird fly up in there. Amen. He, he just blow, take his hand and when he was on earth here and can throw birds out. And he was a little kid, kid coming up. Amen. It's in your scriptures, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. But he didn't put a soul in them. Praise the Lord. Amen. They was here for our keeps. When he put Adam in the garden, he was in charge. He, he made the whole garden, everything in the world. He made it in the, put in the garden before he put Adam in there. But his disobedience, praise the Lord, brought sin upon him, and God had separated him. But he was told to name all the animals. Mankind had to name the animals. Mankind is over all the animals. There's, there's some bad animals out there, but mankind can cock them. You've seen that. You've seen people take snakes and play with them, put them in the pocket and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Horses, tame him. Amen. He's strong and he, he can run fast, but man learn how to train him and tame him. And, Amen. And have him taking him for a ride when he will get ready. And didn't even have to put the horse there to talk to him. Amen. I remember when I was a kid, I was come up in the country in the North Carolinas. Praise the Lord. I used to pray of a horse and play of a mule. It made till in the soil. It made that we could plant a garden. Praise the Lord. And all I had to do to that horse, I said, G. G means go to right. And when I said G, he go right. <laughs> I said, Ha. Ha means go left. Ha, he go left. Amen. When the animal learned your language, and know what you mean. Now, how you, you train them that there. He have a bit in his mouth. Praise the Lord. And when you say G, you pull your right lane thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, ha, then you pull your left side. Then he learned that. So after a while, you don't have to pull that. All you got to say G. You go to the right. Ha, go to the left. Praise the Lord. Amen. And animals, same thing. I remember when I was a little kid coming up there. Praise the Lord, we used to have a cow. Amen. Praise the Lord, I had to take care of that cow, put it out to grace and what have you. Sometimes it break this chain or break the rope or whatever I have on it and get loose. Had to run and catch it. Praise the Lord. All I do is run and get up side of it and catch him in the nose like that and take the cow and carry him anywhere I want to. Praise Lord, you learn that how to handle the beasts, the strong beasts and whatnot like that. As children of God, as people of God, God give us that kind of knowledge, that kind of wisdom, because we're above him. Praise the Lord. Amen. The rest tiger in the jungle. Amen. You look him right dead in the eye head, praise the Lord, like, like you're not afraid of something, and he won't attack you. 
you. There's some about you who you can't do it. Praise the Lord. But you have to know that a God-given power over all animals to mankind. Praise the Lord. He put this earth here. Man had to give, give the names to him. Praise the Lord. Man had to care for him and this, that, and the other. Praise the Lord. God had put us above that. Now, why should you leave in the lesser? And saints of God, today, I want you to remember, God has saved your soul. He did it at Calvary. Praise the Lord. When he bled and died. Praise the Lord. The Bible said when he said that last breath, he looked before the Lord and said, it is finished. Praise the Lord. The plan of salvation for mankind. Now, when he said it was finished, he had died. Saints, are you listen to me? He had died. Now, he said, nobody can take my life. He said, but I'll lay it down. But after three days, I'll pick it up again. Praise the Lord. You, this is God talking. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This, 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 this spirit that is part of you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He power, he power over these things. Amen. So he spoke the word. Praise the Lord. And when he said at Calvary, it is finished. Me that he had died for sin, now you have no sin. The Bible teaches that. Praise Lord. We got to believe it and believe it. The Bible can't lie. Praise the Lord. There's some liars in there. There's some bad folks in there. Amen. But when you look at that little red right in there, that's what I was reading a moment ago. Uh, St. John 3.16. Amen. It was written in red. Praise the Lord. It cannot change. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Amen. To believe is to obey him. Amen. And believe what he said. Praise the Lord. It ain't nothing you can do. Praise the Lord. I don't care how many times you go to church or go somewhere else. That don't save you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't care how you say, I'm going to be nice and I'm going to treat everybody right. That didn't save you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The blood of Jesus cover you. <laughs> Amen. Every human boon. Is that what I would say? Every human boon that born after the similitude of Adam. In other words, got arms, got legs, got feet, eyes, and well, a human being. Praise the Lord. Now, you were born in sin. That God done got rid of it through Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, it ain't nothing you can do now to be saved but believe that he died for your sin. If you die for your sin, you have no sin. Not because you did anything. So don't ever think that because I did this and I did that and all, He's not accepting nothing you do, okay, <laughs> because we are sinful creatures. Amen. Sin can't talk to God. God destroys sin. Praise the Lord. Now, he has destroyed, destroyed all sins in our lives. Saints, so listen to me. I'm telling you what the Bible said. Amen. But you got to believe it. Huh? The Bible says, he that believeth and he is baptized, the same shall be saved. Praise the Lord. In other words, God can't lie. God can't change. So you believe he said it for all mankind. I don't care how terrible that guy is. I don't care what he did in life. Like I said, it was two things that he, he can't do, and God forgive him. And what would I say that was? Self-murder, kill yourself, blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. In other words, said there's no such thing as the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Now, if you do either one of them, then God can't help you. Now, if you haven't did that, you are saved right now. Praise the Lord. Because it ain't by something you did or something you're going to do. It's about what Jesus have already did at Calvary. Saints, are you listening? Amen. Amen. Now, if you want to stay in the Lord... Amen. And serve him. Serve your sisters and brothers. Praise the Lord. Do them good. Praise the Lord. I don't care if they lie on you, cheat on you, talk about you, whatnot. Like the Bible say in the book of St. Luke, he said, quickly forgive them. 
I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. Forgive them. And you shall be forgiven. You see how God put it? Praise Lord. Now, I got to forgive you of your wrong to me for God to forgive you of all our wrong before him. Praise Lord. And when I treat you right, amen, then God will bless me. Praise Lord. And can't nobody curse you. Praise Lord. And I do that through my love and my compassion one for another. Sense of God of all things. Amen. In this Bible. Just believe what he says, St. John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Amen. Love. Amen. Amen. His love, you find in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentle, kind. Amen. Forgiveness and right on through the line. So God wants you to have that kind of love. Amen. Quickly forgive. Amen. They did me wrong, but quickly forgive. Praise the Lord. We hear people tell lies and do bad things, cause you trouble when like that. Forgive them. Amen. And you shall be forgiven. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because they are hopeless bad. I'm coming to a close now. Amen. They, they, they're just not just trying to be so terrible. Amen. They got a nature. Amen. Power over them. Call them Satan. Praise the Lord. They cause them to behave like that. So you quickly forgive them. Praise the Lord. And God will forgive you of your trespasses. Remember that. Praise the Lord. We got a great president. Some people don't like him because of certain things he said, some things he did. Amen. But if God forgive him, what you going to do? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He do things that cause you problems. It may cause the United States problems, what not like that. But why he do that? Because Satan have access to him. Praise the Lord. And he would do those things. But you know what you got to do? Forgive him. Every time he do something wrong or says something wrong, forgive him. And know that Satan has possession of him. And Satan would utter destroy him, okay, if God don't protect him. He won't live one day to another as God then said live and Satan back off. Satan will kill him. The Bible says Satan come but to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus said, I come that you may have life and that more abundantly. God bless you. We stand with us. Thank the Lord. God bless you. Satan, we thank God for you. Amen. You're present here. And just an opportunity to have something to say today to you. Amen. But know that you are secure in God. And it's by nothing you did or nothing you're going to do. Praise the Lord. God of heaven will not accept that. Because I was sin nature, which we didn't have nothing to do. I didn't give myself this sin nature. I was born that way, okay? Amen. So I'm going to do some things wrong. I'm going to say some things wrong. Your brothers and sisters are going to do things wrong. They're going to say something wrong. But the Bible said, quickly forgive them. God can forgive them. So why should you hold some against them? Amen. God is perfect. Amen. He's the only perfect thing on earth. He's not mankind. God bless you. Let us bow our heads. Oh, merciful God. I have in the Father in the name of Jesus. Bless these people. Lay my name one by one. You know it all together. Open our hearts and minds that they may believe, amen, and trust in you and accept your salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Agape Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Renzo James Fields invite you to come worship with us in Springfield, Virginia. We're located 7240 FNG Budenite Drive in Springfield, Virginia. Call 703-372-1174. Agape Worldwide Ministries. Real love, real people, real church.